Hey everybody, so I want to give you a quick shop tour uh, that has actually ran out of my third car garage and a rundown of my laser setup. So let's get into it. So as you can see, I like to keep my laser stowed away just to kind of save on space. Um, I like to have my, my big workbench tops uh, so that way I can assemble things and do those kind of, you know, uh, assembly things elsewhere and have a nice big clean space. Um, but yeah, I slide the laser out and I've got my ducting going right here and then it runs underneath to my inline fan that's pulling all the air out. And then when I need to, I open the door and I kick the, the other end of it out. Um, so I don't have any venting set up like any ducts that are actually going through the wall. Um, you don't have to. Uh, it all depends on where you're at, what your temperature is, you know, whether it's cold outside. Um, but I'm just in a garage, it's uninsulated, I have no heating. Um, so it gets cold in here, um, but I am running a chiller, and my chiller I run with a 50-50 RV antifreeze and distilled water. Uh, that way I'm not worried about it freezing in the winter, breaking my tube, and I really have not had any issues. I'm here in Utah and it's pretty consistently around the 20s or a little bit lower. We don't get into the negatives like hardly at all. Um, but yeah, so if you're in colder climates, those are things to consider uh, for when you're using a chiller or when you're using any other um, kind of water that's gonna be uh, potentially a freeze. Um, but yeah, so what I've got set up, you know, kind of my extras, I do have the inline fan that's extra. Um, I do have my chiller that is a, a CW5200. And then I also have an upgraded air assist. You know, those are the only things that I have done so far, but that is not to say that you have to have those things. When you get your laser, you have everything that you need to get started. So don't, don't over complicate things. Don't try and, you know, put everything, don't put the cart before the horse. You know, figure, get your machine, figure out how to do those things first. Um, but I'll bring you in closer so that way you can actually kind of see where my lines are run and see, you know, maybe get you some ideas of how you want to do your setup. All right, so you may notice that my machine is yellow and black. It is just an, a little bit older than everything that's out on the market now. Uh, I don't even know if you can even get the yellow and black anymore. Um, that being said, there are a couple of differences between my machine and the new one, but all in all, the, the essentials are the same. Um, I'm running a 60 watt machine. I run it off of my laptop here and I run it through USB cable. I've thought about switching to ethernet, haven't yet. A um, couple of the main differences between this machine and the newer ones, um, the new ones have the um, duct fan that's already in here. So you don't have to get a new inline fan, you don't have to. Um, when I got my machine, it came with this monstrosity. It is super loud and just insane. I have never even pulled it out of the box. It is still sitting there and it's out there for the longest time. I need to just get rid of it. Um, I have the inline fan and so I'm not worried about that. The other thing is, is the new machines come with the airline, the pump that actually sits here in the back and is actually doing all of your air assist stuff. Um, when I got my machine, this is what it came with. It came with this pump, it hooked up to a line and it just ran into the back of the machine and it was running the air assist and this pump just, it was either on or off, you know, it was just running all the time. Um, similar to what the, the pump in the machine that are new is now. Um, here is my CW5200. Uh, it's run great. It is not an SNA brand. You will see all the time people talking about you need to have SNA and all this stuff. You don't have to. You know, this one's been running for over a year and it's been fine. And you know, the the similar ones that OM Tech has, you know, they're they're all going to run very similar. They're they're very similar components. Um moving on to uh my outlet, my smoke outlet. So I just have some of this um, it's like HVAC flexible hosing that I got from Home Depot and I just hook it up there and I ha can take it off pretty easy and just stow it away so I can roll the machine in there. Um, but I've got that running here. It goes all the way underneath my workbench. There is my fan. And then I've got it going out here and it drops. And over here next to my compressor, I've got my man door that I will open up. 
Just grab this hose and throw it out. That way it's all just venting outside. Nothing special. Okay, so next thing, air assist. So I did an up air assist upgrade video uh, that you'll be able to see on my channel. Um, but this is the compressor that I am running now. This is the Cobalt 26 gallon compressor. It has been awesome. Um, so I just have my line right here. It goes and it slides underneath, goes back over here, and then connects into my regulator. I have my regulator nice and close to the laser so that way I can adjust it as I need to. Um, and then it goes, runs from there, and then into the back of the machine where I have it set up. So if you wanna see that air assist video, I'll put a card right here so that way you can jump to it. Okay, so let's talk about your water for a second. So when you first get your machine, this is what it comes with. It comes with this aquarium pump, and I ran off of this aquarium pump for at least six months. You don't need a chiller. You don't have to do it, but just do understand that your machine will get warm, the water will get warm, and so you may have to take breaks longer. The chiller actively cools the water, so that way you can run for a longer duration of time. Um, however, you can always add you know, ice or some type of um, cooling to the bucket so that way it can get that water back down when it starts getting up. The only thing that I did add is I got just an aquarium thermometer. So that way I knew what my, my temp was at. So that way I knew when I needed to take a break uh, if it, it came time. Um, the blue bucket that comes with your machine, I didn't like because it didn't have a lid. So I ended up getting a Home Depot bucket. I got a lid and I drilled two holes in the top of it. So that way I could go and have my um, outlet or have my inlet on the machine coming out one side, running water into the machine, and then the outlet from the machine coming in and then dumping back into the bucket. That way <clears throat> it was fairly closed and I wasn't getting stuff inside of the bucket. But this is all you need to, to get started. You don't have to have a chiller. Well, I hope this was helpful to see my layout and, and what things I've got running with my laser. Um, please keep in mind that, that these machines, they're, they're not super fragile. I mean, you're not going to break anything. The, the tube is the most fragile thing. Um, so get out there, get testing things, make some mistakes and learn from them. Um, I know that when I first got my machine, I was slightly hesitant and a little bit nervous, but you, you just got to break that. You got to get in there. You got to use the machine and learn what it can, it can do and, and where its limitations are. As far as all the things that I use, I will go ahead. I'll have everything listed down in the description with links. Um, I'll even start adding some of the videos that I'm doing, have already done on, on different uh, things, such as the air assist upgrade. You know, keep an eye out for some of those other things on the channel so that way you can uh, come along with me and upgrade your machine and do the things that you'd like to.